It's important to make everything sound natural. You don't want to have to think about the sound. We have to be transparent. I'm Karen Ford. I'm the sound engineer. And mixing a show sometimes is like, it's almost like playing an instrument. You, know? you, you manipulate all the aspects of the sound to come together in a way to affect um, the, uh, the feel of the show. You can mix a show in a way to make people feel a certain way, and you can certainly affect their mood, and you can help them feel excited if you mix the show properly. In order to help tell the story, you can effectively control the level of the entire orchestra as well as the actors on stage. I was always interested in music and for as long as I can remember. Since I was probably about five, I wanted to play drums. I get my mother's knitting, my grandmother's knitting needles in my mother's pots and pans and just start banging on things. After graduating college in Minnesota, I moved to New York all by myself, didn't know anybody. Luckily, I met um, Lily Tomlin through my aunt, uh, my aunt Sonia. She bought me a, a ticket for my birthday one year to go see Lily Tomlin's show, and it was the Search for Science of Intelligent Life in the Universe. She says, oh, I, under, I understand you're a sound engineer. I said, yes. She goes, well, why don't you meet my, my sound man? And uh, maybe he can let you sit with him and watch the show. She introduced me to Bruce Cameron, and he was very gracious to um, then introduce me to working in shops in New York. And then eventually, Lily needed a sound engineer to do her tour. And uh, he called me up. He says, oh, hey, Karen, are you interested in doing it? I said yes. I took the job, and that was in 1988, and I've been working ever since. As the mixer for a new show especially, I will go and watch rehearsals so that I can constantly just see what's going on, know the script, take any kind of notes, you know, before the cast gets on stage. Um, and then once the cast is on stage, we put them in mics. Once we finally get a chance to do a run-through, that's where I get a chance to really, you know, practice my show and get used to how the actors sound, um, what kind of voice they have, what kind of EQ I'll have to do on them, um, get used to their rhythm, uh, get used to what the music is going to do. Um, and, you, you know, you're taking, you're taking notes from not only the designer, but from the director and from the, 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 if it's, you know, of course, it's, if it's a musical, then from the music team, everybody wants, sometimes they're all on the same page, and sometimes they're not. So you have to take all that information and discern, you know, how to put it all together. As soon as I come in to work, I come in, turn the power on, and I uh, basically just uh, put uh, some music on, check e each speaker's system. So you have your vocal speaker system, which is separate from the band speaker system. I play a couple of sound effects to make sure that my playback system is working properly. And then my assistant comes out. He brings the microphones after he's put new batteries in. Check. Check. We check the microphones in the system because I've had problems where the computer has gone down. And then I, I need that time to go back and find out what the problem is. We've had times where mics um, go bad, and I will call on a radio to my assistant, and he will go and, and uh, grab that actor as soon as they can. Sometimes if the mic is broken and they're in a scene with somebody else, hopefully they can figure out that their mic is broken, and they'll get closer to the actor they're playing opposite, and then I will use that other actor's mic as much as I can in order to pick them up like on my show, Makaj. There's a scene at the top of the show where they, they kick beach balls into the audience. So what we have to deal with, with is with the fact that these beach balls hit the equipment. That kind of thing, we constantly have to check and make sure that uh, everything is in place before the show. I just have to be aware of how the system is behaving. The weather can, can be a factor if the air is more humid. The house sounds brighter, everything sounds a little louder, and conversely, if it's dry, it sounds a little dull. Then I have to mix the show differently. I have to be aware of 
how the actors are feeling sometimes. If someone is tired, generally then will not give you as much energy, therefore not as much level, not as much sound. So I try to help them out in, uh, in that respect. And that means not just pushing them louder, but actually balancing the orchestra or the band. So my hands are on the faders when I'm mixing the show. My hands are on the faders all the time. I have to. But I use the computer to assist me uh, cue by cue. You want everyone to hear as well upstairs in the very top of the balcony as well as on the main floor. If you can still understand and hear what everyone is saying but not be aware that they're being amplified, then you're doing a good job. We don't want to be mentioned in the reviews at all. If you're not mentioned, it's great. What I enjoy about being a sound engineer, especially for theater, is the, the music, the show itself, and I just I feel blessed that I'm able to to do sound, something that I really enjoy and make money at it, and I can go to work and and, and just love it.